Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. All right, well, we're going to jump into this. We're going to go through these scriptures. I'll have the scriptures down in the, in the description box so you can go back over them. Um, I gave a message before on the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost and the power of that and how three entities come together with some would say Trinity and all that. I, you can go back over the old messages. I broke that down. Some of these scriptures, I'm, those scriptures, I'm going to tap back in, but I'm coming with another message called All in One, All in One, explaining not necess not just about the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, but because I gave that before. Like I said, you can go back. It was a, a series called Trinity. I called it Trinity because that's what people say, but I really broke down with that, why they use that term and all that and all that, but I broke it down scripturally. Because the scripture says, he that blaspheme against the Holy Ghost, there is no forgiveness. So, you know, uh, just a little in that message. Uh, you got to go back and check it out. Because, you know, it is, the Holy Ghost is, is, is all power. And um, you see us in, in praising and running. But what happens is some people imitate the Spirit. So unbelievers see people acting phony. Then they don't believe all together, which is bad. But that's not the message. Go back on that, that old, old series and you'll really get a lot out of it. But today I'm talking about all in one. And I'm going to jump through some scriptures. So I'm going to get in John. I'm also getting in First John. So there's a difference in John and First John, Second John, Third John are towards the back of the Bible. But without, without being much longer, I want to get, I want to get through it, and I want to talk about all in one, and I want to talk about how even when Christ was bringing out a message that. Um, after a while, not the 12 disciples, but one of the, but it was another group because it was more that was becoming um, the, into the dis discipleship. And they just said, you know what, I don't want to be down no more. And it's deep. And so really I'm talking today about how the Most High is all in one, but you must come to that one through the Son. And if you don't know him, it's, it's best to repent of your sins. It's very easy. Some people say, I don't know how to pray. It's just like, you know, you're just conversing with all honor and respect to the Most High. You know, Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, Yahushua, Yahshua, all these things. So you just would say, listen, I'm a sinner. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me. I've sinned and sinned only against you. You've given me life. That's why I move and have my being while I inhale and exhale. If it wasn't for your grace and your mercy. You know, and you repent and ask them forgiveness. Ask them and the Father to come make their abode with you into your temple. Clean up your temple. doesn't mean soap water. It means your way of living. People say, well, I, I prayed stark to let the Lord know I'm coming to him. No, he wants you to, 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 to drop the, the, the filth, not necessarily of the flesh, which we can talk about, but the flesh of those things that we do that are not pleasing to him and trying to walk in holiness. But let's get into this message. All right. And we're talking about all in one. I'm going to go to Ephesians. The scriptures will be in the description box. So you can grab them from there and go back over it. Please do. Okay? Shabbat Shalom. All praises. Ephesians, the fourth chapter. I just want to talk about all in one. The fourth chapter, and I'm going to go down to the fourth verse. Ephesians 4.4. 4. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. And of course, that baptism is by water immersion in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Okay? In his name, also be baptized in his name. Okay, because some people was baptized in his name in the book of Acts, but yet they hadn't received the Holy Ghost yet until hands was laid on them. And I told you about how we so we got to tarry for it. It's not it's nothing you play with. It's nothing you just start acting like you got made up some tongues and you going, you know. And that's the problem. Some people do entertainment and it, it hinders the unbelievers from coming to um, the knowledge of the truth. One God. And Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. Okay? All in one. But he can't be flowing in the temple if you, if you put your temple with a harlot, or you went to this other doctrines of unbelief, and you serving false gods and idols and deities and all that stuff. Okay? So, we're going to explain that a little bit more. I'm going to go to First John. Not John, the Gospel of John, but First John. And I'm going to go to the fifth chapter. And I'm going to get First uh, John chapter 5. I'm going to start at verse 1. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him, that begat, loveth him also that is begotten of him. What does that mean? Loveth him that the Father that also gave us the Son. Because there is that. Like I said, I gave a message on, on a while back. When people use the Trinity word, I broke 
why people be saying that, and but I really broke down scriptures what it, what that is, what, what what we really should be talking about, as opposed to just throwing that word around, and, you know. But we should really be honoring the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, the All in One. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep His commandments, and that's the problem. We need to be keeping His law, statutes, and commandments. We know, yes, ten commandments, but there's actually six hundred and thirteen commandments. Okay. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. You know, they want us to do right, you know. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Right? That believe that Jesus is the Son of God. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood, and it is the spirit that beareth witness, because the spirit is truth. See that? That's why you gotta have a spirit. But the spirit will lead and guide you in all truth. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free, and he is the way, the truth, and the life. See all these how these things come together. For there are three. Come on now. We're gonna go all in one with this. For there are men first John five verse seven. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. That's your all in one. See? And then we know that that verse that says in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word became the word became flesh and dwelt amongst men and all, you know, all of that stuff. So it's all that's the all in one. And because sometimes people say, what is the Trinity? Because people be using that tr word Trinity instead of really coming scripturally. You know, I mean, they'd be meaning well to explain it. But anyway, I gave a message on all that, a series of that a while ago. But this get with this right now. This is this is this is real. This is good. And there are three that bear witness. Because a lot of times people don't know. Even some people just really like, well, I don't never knew what that meant. You know, how can they all be one and all that stuff? I went through that. Well, I'm just breaking it down. So there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree in one. I'm reading out the Bible. And these three agree in one. See, this all in one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his son. Father, the son only goes Begat be. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave us his Son, which is the word. And I wrote, let just rewind, let just follow the word, Holy Ghost. And this is the record that God gave, have given us to eternal life. And this is and this life is in his Son. Way, the truth, the life. See how it all adds up? Because a lot of times your pastors don't break these things down. He that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. See that? So these people are following false prophets and don't even know it. These, you know, they're following people. They used to be this doctrine, this doctrine. Now they're saying they all these doctrines all in one. And we just, when we started out in Ephesians, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. You see how it all connects. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. See how powerful that is? Now I'm going to go to John. You know, you can rewind that and get all of that how it played out as well as the scriptures. Now I'm going to go to John, the sixth chapter, and go all the way from back to the front of the New Testament, John 6th chapter, and I really want to get through this, just flow through this as fast as I can, John 6, let's go to verse 29, John 6 and 29, Jesus answered and said unto them, this is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent, see it's all, how this is all connected, they said, they said therefore unto him, what sign showest thou then that we may see and believe, believe thee, what doest thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. And the manna fell in the Old Testament for the people to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my father giveth you the true bread from heaven. He's talking about himself now. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me, and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that come to me I will in no wise cast out. See, so he's not going to turn away. 
For I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. See this Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost all in one. And this is the Father's will which, he, which have sent me, that all which he have given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. See, when he comes back. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. The Jews then murmured at him, because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, Is not this Jesus the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he saith, I come down from heaven? Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. Don't murmur. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. And see, a lot of people, that's why they don't come, because they haven't been drawn to him, to the, to the Messiah, the Amashiach. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught of God. Every which is Elohim, Torah Elohim, Torah Elohim. Mm. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and hath learned of the Father, cometh unto me. Not that any man hath seen the Father, save he which is of God, he hath seen the Father. See, he's saying he's seen his Father when he was in heaven, you know. Verily, verily, you know, like it said in the beginning of Genesis, let us make man. You know, those are two people talking in our image, okay? Bringing it together, because a lot of times these things aren't preached and people walk away not understanding the word of the Most High. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. See, they did that manna which came down from them, but they're gone. Because, see, he is the bread of life. You know, when we have communion, we consecrate the bread to, from the natural to the spiritual. We consecrate the, the wine or the drink or the grape juice from the natural to the spiritual, uh, commemorating his, his death, the body and blood for us, like we just talked about. When we was talking about water, spirit, blood, it all comes together. I'm glad it's being explained all in one. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which come down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. Remember, he died on the cross. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. See, this is why it's important to take communion, and first repent of your sins. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eat, eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can hear this? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? What? And if he shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before. So he's telling them, I'm going to go up right in front of you when I get off the cross. Is it... Is, it is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profiteth nothing. See, this flesh is nothing. It's carnal. It's death. The spirit is everlasting life, according to the word of the Most High. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed it not, and who should betray him. So he's talking about Judas, you know. And he said, therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of the Father. That's why he's saying, that's why a lot of people in these other thoughts and beliefs and bleed off, because they haven't been drawn to him. And it's, it's a shame because some of them see one thing and then they say, I don't want the Bible, I don't understand it and all that. You know, they don't, they don't want to come and, be, and, and, and learn of the Most High. And some churches, sadly enough, are not preaching out this word. They're preaching for people's money. And we're going to be real about it which is the way of Balaam that the scriptures talk about when them people are going to perish. You know, when you just said, yes, yes, the church has bills and things like that, but I'm talking about when people are just robbing people, not how Paul robbed the, 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 the build the church. We're talking a whole, y'all you know, know what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? From that, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. See how they just said, you know what, it's a hard saying, I don't want to be down. And you got to keep going forward when they walk away. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, will you go also? Then Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life, and we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one is a devil? He spake that of Judas Iscariot. You know, and you know Judas went and hung his supple self, and then they cast lots and had another disciple. All right, those are the twelve disciples and the twelve um, children of Israel, which make the twenty-four elders in Revelations. And we talked about all in one. Shalom.